Hey everybody, my name is Jared Tate, the founder of the Digibuy blockchain, and today I am coming to you with a very exciting demonstration. I am about to demonstrate to you 100% working Digibuy DigiDollar stablecoin code inside the latest Digibuy version 8.26 wallet. Now this isn't finished, there's a lot yet to be done, and I'm not going to go into a technical, detailed, deep dive of everything that's happening or how DigiDolly works. My point is just to get this out so the world can see that this is possible and this is going to happen. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have the wallet booted up in what's called reg test. Reg test, and anybody can do this that's running a core wallet. And for those of you who don't know, the core wallet is the most important wallet for any blockchain. The core wallet is the back end for exchanges, other wallets, other services. It literally is the blockchain. And anybody can run a core wallet with Digibyte the same way you could do it with Bitcoin or Litecoin. But that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother video. So I'm running the core wallet here on my MacBook Pro computer. I've opened it in reg test, which there's three different uh, nets or mainnet. There's mainnet, which is the main blockchain. There's testnet, which is where you can test mine. It's, it's like mainnet, but it has distributed nodes. There's testnet. And then there's reg test, which is basically just your local computer. It's like your own private blockchain. It acts just like the real blockchain. You could just do things a whole lot faster like I'm about to show you. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new wallet the same way I would an existing Digibyte wallet. I'm going to name it Bob. Bob is about to demonstrate something very cool. And Bob, I'd like to think, is a very cool guy. Now, as you can see here, the wallet is empty. And that's because the blockchain is at a zero because it's a fresh blockchain starting at the Genesis block. So the first thing I needed to do is I need to receive block rewards that I'm about to generate. So I'm going to copy the address and I'm going to go to console. And as you can see here, I am in reg test and the current blockchain has zero blocks. So I'm going to go to console and I'm going to use this command called generate to address and I'm going to type 651 and I am going to generate blocks to this address. So what I'm going to do is generate 651 blocks and what that's going to do is that's going to go past the DigiDollar soft fork activation point which is block 650 on reg test, which is the BIP9 procedure for activating new changes to a blockchain. Same way we did Taproot, same way we did Itocrypt, the same process will work for the DigiDollar soft fork. I'm going to hit enter, and the wallet is going to generate these blocks, and all the block rewards are going to go to this wallet. So as you can see, Bob has a ton of Digibyte now. Bob is a happy man. So Bob has what is that 24 million digibyte I'd, I'd love to have that and by the for the record i have nowhere near that much so pretty amazing for a blockchain that's almost 12 years old so anyway so now as you can see the wallet is your typical core wallet the same as it has been but now we have this cool digi dollar tab and as you can see there you can send you can receive you can mint you can redeem and then you can look at the vault where you have your time lock digibyte that you use to issue DigiDollar. So Bob, he's going to come in here and he's going to mint 250 DigiDollars, the equivalent of 250 USD. Now you see this rate here that comes from the Oracle price feed. So that code has not been implemented yet, but the way the Oracle price feed works is every single block, it'll update the real time price of DigiByte. And this will be aggregated from a bunch of price oracles. Now, the way I think this should work is we might have a few dozen or maybe anybody who's running a core node should be able to become a price oracle. And what that does is go out and gets uh, price data from like a few dozen sources, averages it, and then contributes it, contributes it each block to the blockchain. That's how we're gonna get the pricing mechanism for the decentralized peg. We'll go into that in more videos. So, Bob is going to mint these digi dollars. And as you can see here, it's going to prompt and say, hey, this is going to be locked for 30 days. Well, he's like, well, maybe I don't want to do 30 days. Maybe I want to do seven years and I get way more digi dollars for the amount I'm locking. 
the amount of DGB I'm using in locking up his collateral. But then he goes back. He's like, well, I want to test this. So Bob's going to go with 30 days. So he's going to lock up 125,000 digibyte DGB. And then he's going to mint 250 digi dollars. So let's go ahead and do it. He's going to hit yes. And remember, this is time locked. It's cryptographically locked. So it can't be accessed until the time lock expires. Then it can be redeemed. So he's going to hit yes. And boom, digi dollar mint transaction has been created successfully. He's going to hit OK. Now look, he's going to go to his overview page and he's going to see, hey, I got 250 digi dollars now. I also have 125,000 DGB locked as collateral. Are they in my vault? Yes, they are. As you can see here, here's the time remaining until I can redeem them. Here's the lock period, etc. Now, what does this look like in the normal wallet? Well, as you can see here, you actually have four outputs. You have the time lock output. You have the DGB mint, which is actually happening in OP return right now. And we're doing that because it's a little easier for backwards compatibility because doing a full OP digi dollar implementation, I don't think is appropriate just yet. But anyway, these transactions, they haven't been confirmed. So before we confirm these transactions, and remember, this is a local test net, so there's no mining happening. I actually have to come in here and I'll have to generate some more blocks. But before I do that, I want to come up here and I want to create a new wallet for Alice, right? So now I'm going to move this out of the way. Now, Alice has nothing in her wallet, right? Bob has all the DGB. Alice thinks Bob's pretty cool. And they went on a date and she decided they needed to go Dutch. And Bob owes, owes her $75 for the steak dinner because Bob ate all the steak. So Alice wants 75 digi dollars or 75 USD from Bob for the steak dinner. Now, before Bob can send him, he needs to confirm his transaction. So I'm going to go ahead and mine nine more blocks, right? I'm going to generate, boom. Now we're going to go back to Bob's account. And as you can see here, these transactions have now been confirmed. So those digi dollars, if you go here, are confirmed. They are in the blockchain. They are stored. They are good to go. Now, Bob asked Alice for her digi dollar address. So she's going to create a new address and send it to Bob. And as you can see here, she has nothing in her wallet. We're going to go to Bob. And Bob is going to send, as you can see, he's got 250 digi dollars ready to send. So he's going to send, he's going to send her the $75 for the steak dinner. Actually, what am I doing here? Oh, there it is. Okay. There's a little bug here. This thing is not perfect. There's a lot of kinks to be worked out, but for some reason it took a minute to update the balance there, but it did work. So he's going to send it. Here is the address. Here's the fee. And he's going to send it and boom, digital dollar transfer successful or successful. Now remember, this is working code. This is a real life pay to taproot script that has been signed by the wallet's private keys has been broadcast and then is going to be mined and confirmed in the blockchain, right? So now to check this, let's go to his overview. And what do you know? He's only got 175 digi dollars now, but in his vault, you can see his original mint transaction. And as you can see here, he still had to burn some DGB as gas. And so that's actually this output that you're seeing right here um, in the normal transaction overlay. So now let's go to Alice's wallet. Now look at Alice. Hey, she just got this transaction for zero DGB. What does that mean? Well, if she goes to her digi dollar menu, she goes to overview. Boom. Look at that. She just received 75 digi dollars. Boom. And there you have it. This is working code. This is how the digi dollar will function. There's still a lot of things to develop and test like the emergency redemption ratio, full redemption capability, the dynamic collateral adjustment. But this is 100% possible, and this is going to happen. We are talking about the world's 
first truly decentralized UTXO time lock stable coin. So if you haven't heard, we're doing a two hour long discussion tomorrow on DigiDollar with a bunch of great people. I believe it's five o'clock Eastern time. Uh, I think it's three o'clock my time, mountain time. But I invite you all to come check it out, learn more. And if you haven't, go to digibyte.io forward slash digidollar and read the one page explainer if you want to know more about digidollar. This is very exciting. I have never been this excited in the almost 13 years I've been in crypto. This is an absolute game changer. I'm so excited to be a part of it. This is real working, functioning code. And the more people we can get involved in this discussion, the more people we can help develop and test, the better off this is going to be. And we're going to test the crap out of this. We are going to test this more than I tested my mother's patience growing up as a teenager. I can tell you that. Um, we're going to test everything we can. And with the help of AI, we're going to use AI for penetration testing. But this, in my humble truthful opinion is the biggest game changer i have ever come across in crypto and blockchain in uh in 13 years so with that stay tuned for more information